Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be discussing the new Diffuse or Sharpen module. If you're new to this format, in this series we go through modules in Dark Table and we discuss them in detail. We go through every single control or value that we can change, what it does and how to use it. However, we do not apply it, we don't go testing it. We have another series called Showcase Sessions that we use for that. And after this video, I'll be making a long showcase session specifically for this module where we'll be using it on several photos to see how it works. Well, the name Diffuse comes from diffusion and diffusion is what happens to light particles when they move through media like air or water or when they encounter obstacles and what have you and what we see usually in uh, photos are um, I don't know hazing effect for instance uh, and that's the effect when uh, light goes through uh, the air and then it loses acuity or sharpness or through the lens glass that as well causes diffusion and less sharpness in the image. Now we can use this module either to add more of the diffusion effect so blur if you want or less sharpness or we can use it to reverse that effect and produce sharper images. Examples of the sharpening application would be for instance to mitigate the blur caused by demosaicing algorithms the ones that we use in dark table or the effects of the anti-aliasing filter or for instance um, lens deblurring, uh, removing haze that we just discussed and the opposite adding diffusion would be uh, to create a bloom for instance in the photo or uh, even to repair some damaged parts of the photo like highlights. You can uh, denoise while preserving the edge or we can apply a surface blur. We can even use this module to create some artistic effects like line drawing or watercolor. All right, let's go through the controls. The first one is iterations. As you might guess, this is the number of times the algorithm will run on top of it itself. Keep in mind that this is a very CPU and calculations intensive module. So the higher the iterations or the more iterations, as I should say, you do, the slower the module will be. Next, we have central radius, which is the size of the details to be diffused. So zero causes the diffusion to act more heavily on fine details, and higher values will work on larger details. The next one is radius span, and that is the band of details that the module will work on. So if we have now zero, we're working on details of zero picks, and then it's going to be a radius of eight pixel around each detail. If we had two here, it will be two. If you have more, you see where we're going with this. So this is how many pixels around each detail will be worked on in a radius. So it will remain a circle. Next, we have diffusion speed. Speed is just how fast the particles are moving in an environment. The particles will move differently in different en environments, like, like air and water, and that's what we're trying to simulate using those controls. There are four algorithms in calculating those speeds. The first one is gradient, the second one is Laplacian, and then it's the gradient of Laplacian, and then it's Laplacian of Laplacian. We're going to have to play around with those to see what effect they do. It's an addition, so you should never have more than 100% in total between all of them in one direction. Otherwise, you're going to get yeah, artistic effects. The main thing to keep in mind in the diffusion speed is that positive values apply diffusion and negative values undo diffusion. Zero does nothing. Next, we have diffusion directionality, which is the direction in which the particles will be diffused. In nature, the, the particles will go from high energy to low energy. 
whether that's potential or the concentration of particles or what have you. So in the photo, this diffusion always occurs from the brightest pixels to the darkest. The module uses an implementation that can simulate natural diffusion using what is called an isotropic diffusion, quoting from the manual here. All directions have the same weight, like heat diffusion, but can also force a weighted direction parallel to the gradients, forcing diffusion across object edges and creating ghost edges or a weighted direction perpendicular to the gradients called isophote, forcing diffusion to be contained inside edges, like a droplet of watercolor. The relative weight of each direction, gradient or and isophote, is user-defined and can be found by the diffusion directionality section of the module. All right, so how does this work? Each one is associated with the speed. Zero is isotropic, so in all directions. Negative values make the diffusion follow gradients more closely, so across the edges, and positive values make diffusion follow isophotes more closely, so inside the edges. The next section is edges management. The first one is sharpness, and this allows us to control sharpness irrespective of what we did here. Zero does nothing, positive values sharpen, and negative values blur. This is mostly to be used when we're blooming or blurring to retain some sharpness while adding the effect that you want, the glow effect, the blur effect, but you want to keep a bit of edges. It's not meant to be used as a sharpening tool by itself. Next we have edge sensitivity and this one detects edges in the image, applies a negative effect on the module on those edges. This way, the module will be more effective in between the edges. Zero disables the penalty, so you're not using it, and higher values make the penalty stronger and more sensitive to edges. So if we have edge artifacts like fringes and halos, you can try increasing this one to get rid of them. Next, we have edge threshold, which defines a variance threshold, which mainly affects dark or blurry areas or flat surfaces. So positive values will increase the penalty for low variance areas, which is good for sharpening or increasing local contrast without crushing blacks. So if, if we increase this, it will consider an area where, like the shirt, where it's black all as one area and will apply a bigger penalty. When I say penalty, it's penalty on the effects of the module in that area. This way we won't be affecting and crushing the blacks. Negative value will decrease the penalty, which is good for denoising or deblurring, which is the opposite. If we wanted, if, we, if this was a high ISO image and usually you get a lot of noise in the blacks, say a night image, you want the effect to be more on the low variance area, which is the whole black sky for instance. So you use negative values here. And the last control is diffusion speciality. And this one is useful to in-paint highlights. If we increase it above zero, the diffusion will occur in regions with a luminance greater than this setting. And there will be a Gaussian noise as well added to simulate particles and initialize the in-painting. In addition, we have a lot of presets here. All of them are self-explanatory. The only thing to maybe look at is the fast ones and the fast ones are quick and dirty. So you don't get the best result but you use the least of your CPU if that's an issue. Alright, on the surface it's a simple module. We don't have a lot of controls. Oh, we do but not really. But we do have as well a lot of presets that we can use. However, I think this will become a lot clearer in the next video where we put all of that to application. I'm going to get a few free raw photos from online so that you guys as well can download them and test them. I'll try to find a variety of 
photos that we can use and scenes and see what kind of effect we can get to actually either diffuse or sharpen those images. And we'll go then through all everything that we've learned here and see how to apply it. And as well, we'll try all of the presets on these to see how they work by default and whether we can use them as a stepping stone and work from them. So that's it for this video. I hope that you found it interesting. And if you have any suggestions, comments or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.